Good day everyone. My name is Graphics. In this video, we want to solve a problem involving link mechanism. And the question goes like this. It says, a connecting rod, AC, 120 millimeter is joined to a crank, AB, radius 30 millimeter. As the crank revolves around B, other end of the rod slides along line DE. Plot the locus of the midpoint P on the connecting rod as the crank rotates one complete revolution. As the crank makes one complete resolution, right? So what we'll do is... Um, if you look at the right hand side of the screen, you see a diagram there, right? So we are going to replicate that diagram. Then we are going to draw the locus of P, right? So the first thing is we should replicate that diagram you can see at the right hand side of the screen. So let's start. Now, if I should pick my instrument, right? I am going to draw my horizontal line this way in this fashion <clears throat> hope you can see that and I also draw my vertical line this way in this fashion <clears throat> now we are giving the crank now the crank is AB, as you can see from here, from here to here, AB, right? That will be the radius of what of the crank, and that is 30 millimeter. So this will be the center of the crank, which is given as what as B, right? And we're going to draw the radius to get A, that is radius of 30. If I pick up my instrument from 0 to 3, is 30 right and i'll place it on b right and i'll draw a circle which will be representing the crank right circle to be representing what the crank we know our b our point a falls along this point so what we should do is we use our 30 degrees degrees square Place on my t square, and you're going to get point what? Point A. So at this point, point A lies on this point. So this is AB, right? And the question still moves on and says um, the crank revolves about B, meaning that point A moves in this direction here. right it moves in a clockwise manner that again about b that again as you can see in the diagram now we are not told that as the crank revolves around b other end of the road slides along the line de right now this end here this is the line de here right the line de and we have, uh, we said the connecting rod is, is 120 millimeter AC. So if this is a connecting rod will be somewhere around this point here. So I'll get the connecting rod. I'm going to measure 120 on my meter rule, right? I'll measure 120 on my meter rule this way. Hope you can see that from zero to 12 is 120, all right? And I'm going to place it at A here, and I'll mark on this point here, along the center line here. And that point will be my point what? My point C. Is that again? I'll just write it C. Now, we'll now join it together, A to C. Which I'm going to take in. Uh, we are still told that um, B 
as in point P is in is in the midpoint of what of AC of the can of the connecting rod. This is the connecting rod, and the midpoint is P. So half of one twenty is sixty. So I'm going to measure sixty, and this is sixty here. So this point you're seeing here is my point P. How good? Now the next thing here that we're told. This is C and the end point here, let's say here is what is E. This point here, let us call it E. As the question suggests. Right? The line C E or better still, I call it the line C B. So again, G E, any of them you want to. C E. Right? So let's move forward. Now, we are told this is what we are having here. These are the points that we are what we are having here. This is the line CE. So better I should use a center line to represent that point. So this will be a long one, short, long, short, this way. If you can see that. So this is what we have. We have um, successfully reproduced the figure that is displayed at the right hand side of the screen. Now the question is, if this point A, which is on the crank, rotates about B, right? That is one revolution. When it moves from A, move back to A, is one revolution. And as it does that, the point C moves to and through CE. Is that okay now? So point C moves to and through CE. So I have a line coming here. And here so this point C moves to and through of what of CE right it moves to and through we are told to plot the locus of what of P so the next thing you do after you produce this is not to plot the locus of P now you're going to repeat this thing at every point of the circle you can divide the circle into as many parts as you want to divide it you see arrive at the same result the same answer right so I can use till my C square. Now I was placing on my T square this way earlier. I can just complete this using faint line. Can you see that? I'll turn it the other way around this way also. I'll do the same thing here too. Do this and this. You can see that. Then I will lie it down in this manner. So I'll do this. And this and I'll turn it this way too I'll do this and this so you can also use a compass also like I've showed in previous videos which you can also watch in the channel other videos I made use of what a compass to get these points here now and you can click on this link to watch other videos on link mechanism right so let's move. So if this is A, we're going clockwise. This will be A1. Here will be A2. Here will be A3. Here will be A4. This will be A5. Here will be A6. We have A7, A8, A9, A10, A11 then back to A. That is one revolution. So what we are going to do is to repeat everything for every point. So we know very well that from A to C is 120. So I'll repeat the same point. When this connecting rod, when this crank rotates A to point A1, what happens? The connecting rod C moves also. It moves backward, right? So move backward toward C1. So I'm going to join C1 to A1 in this fashion. Hope you can see that. Then I'm going to get another point of P, midpoint, which is 60. So I'll just measure P here. And I'll come on C1 in order that I can easily get my P1. So this point here you see is what? P1. Right, similarly, 
where the connecting when the point a1 moves to a2 with the same distance of 120 right can you see that i'll move to a2 and i'm going to mark that means as this move to a2 the crank the connecting rod moves backward again to c2 so this is c2 here hope you can see that i will get a new midpoint so from c to p is 60 so this one here my midpoint will be somewhere around here so how would i get that is by connecting c2 to what a2 so we're using faint line so this point here as you can see is my p2 similarly as a move to a3 by when the connection rotates we'll get a new c2 moves again backward so take the distance of c2 from here to a is 120 measure 120 then you come to a3 and you mark so c now is now at point what c3 then i'll join a3 and c3 You can see that then p is the midpoint so i'll take distance of a to p and i'll mark to this point too so this point you see here is p what p3 how good similarly when a now moves toward point a4 right then if you mark from c to A is 120, then from A4, I'll mark to be at this point here. C will move backward again to what? To C4. Right? To C4. And the connection rod, midpoint P, will be in the midst of what? This point here. And that will be the what? P4. Similarly, when the connecting rod moves from A to A5 with the same distance of C to 120 here, right, C to A, I will come to A here, and I'm going to mark here. What do you notice? Connecting rod moves forward again. So at this point, on the same point as C2, you're going to see your what? Your C5. How good? So you connect it to C5. Can you see? And you're going to get P, which is the midpoint. From here to here is P. And you're going to mark at this point. So this will be my P5. How good? Similarly, if you do the same thing, what do you notice? A2 and A5 is on the same point. That is C2 and C5. Similarly, C, um, C3 all together. Let's see this again. So, similarly, if A C3 and C5 is on the same point, now C6 and C2 will be on the same point. So that's what I want to do here now. Be on the same point. C2 and C6 will be on the same point. And this will be my C6 here. Hope you understand what I'm trying to do. It is symmetrical. And this line is passing through the center. That is why your A3, your C A3 and A2, they're on the same point. Similarly, you have your C3 and C4 on the same point. Or you can just follow the manual way. You measure 120 from A to C to A. You come to C6 and you mark. Can you see that? If you do you come to C5, you mark on C, uh, C5 here, they'll be on the same point. Now we move forward. A1 and A7 on the same point, right? Meaning that what C1 and C7 will be on the same point. So if I join this to this, C will move backward here. Yeah? So this will be my C7. Are we good? They are on the same point. You can see even this that we measured earlier. A2 and A6 on the same point, A3 and A2 and A5 on the same point, right? Now we we'll move forward and we'll see. What do you notice? 
this is a here and this is a8 so meaning that a and a8 is on the same points so i'll just move this a8 to c hope you can see that a8 to what to c so this will be my c8 how good because this point and this point if you look at it let's take a look what do you notice they're on the same point out together so we need to get our point p so if i move from c to p if i come to c6 i'll get another point p that will be my p6 if i come to a7 right i'm going to get another one here which will be my p7 then if I come to A8 here, I'm talking about the midpoint, I'll get my words P8. I'm good. You can do that manually. Now if I move again with the distance of C8 and A, right? If I come to A9, I'll mark. That will give me C9. This is what C9. So I'm going to join A9 to C9. So once I've done that, I'm going to get my midpoint P from C to P. Give me from here to what? To the 9 that we have here. Right? we will have here that will be my p9 so the nutshell look at point 11 and 9 it's on the same point right when you cut them from this point either you do it again from c to a and you mark from a um a10 you mark at this point that will give us c10 right then you get the midpoint from c to p then from c10 the midpoint here will fall here and that will be p10 this will be p10 then similarly from c to a if I come to 11, you discover that it will land at C9. Can you see that? On the same point as C9 here. So you just join it. 11, C11 to C9 on the same point. Can you see that? Because then, like I told you earlier, A9 and C9. Then they'll be on the same point here. So, you get the midpoint. We know that from C to P is the midpoint. So if I come to C9, on C11, I'm going to mark. Can you see that? This is the C11 here, so I'll be getting my P11. So you see all these points? I'm going to join them using my what? Using my French curve. How good? I'm going to join them using my French curve. Right? So the midpoint of A5 is just at this point here. So this is what we have here. Right? This is the locus of P. How good? So if you have found this video helpful, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and also share the video. Thanks for watching.